Welcome to Around Town, featuring what's happening here in the greater Concord area. I'm your host, Dick Patton. It's a pleasure to welcome you back with my director, Brian Buckman. And uh, we're now headed into the early, the late summer, early autumn season. And it doesn't seem possible that summer is on the, uh, on the out. And uh, in comes fall. But uh, I don't know. And today my special guest is... Um, Fish, oh, I mean no. Conservation officer Mike Eastman. Well, they still say fish and game, but yeah, you know. But I we try to give you. Now, do you have a rank to it? Like, I do. That? Yeah, I'm a captain. Captain. Yeah. Okay. That's higher than lieutenant. Or small it's higher than lieutenant. Yeah. Oh, it's, you, go. Uh, you go colonel, major, captain. Oh, so I'm getting up a lot of them. Yeah. I, How I, many years you've been with them? I have been here 17 years. Really? Yeah. You're New Hampshire boy all the way around. I am, yeah. I was uh, born in Laconia, uh, mm -hmm. raised in Guilford, and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm from New Hampshire. There you go, <laughs> oh boy. Well, you know, it's funny because when I was still, my first two years in state legislator, I was on fishing game. Mm -hmm. I used to, it was interesting. That was the one I picked and uh, got it, but um, and then I got transferred to transportation, but. You know, you guys, uh, and I, I don't think they realize uh, how busy you are. It's just not a uh, uh, summer or hunting season. You got I, I didn't even know until one day, oh, I can't remember his name. He was um, over at the headquarters, took me on a ride to Durham, and mm -hmm. he told me, I didn't know you covered the seashore. Oh, definitely, yeah. I never knew that. Not I only. thought that was all Coast Guard or some. I didn't know that the state, state covered that the fishing game down there. No. And um, so it was very interesting, and um, you know, it was, I, I was just amazed. They were stalking fish in the river, Scott La, the late Scott LaCrosse, who I had known for years. Mm -hmm. and uh, he was stalking fish in the rivers down yep. in Merrimack and stuff, and it was interesting to see that. And uh, but uh, you know, you uh, you guys between the winter season coming up with snowmobiles and all that stuff and violations and now I don't see your gun weapon on you. You are uh, you're only all, you're allowed to wear them now, right? Oh, I've got a gun. Yeah, oh, it's oh, right on your side. That's um, right. Okay. Yep, and just magazine and a handcuff case over yep. here. But you have all the powers now, basically, of arrest and everything else. We've, yeah, it's, we've always had powers of arrest. Yeah. Uh, and so, every, we did everything except motor vehicle. Yeah. And then about yeah. f four or five years ago, we were given I motor remember vehicle that. powers. Yeah, I remember and, that. Uh, the reason being is that, um, you know, if we came across a, a DWI or something of that nature um, at that time, the person could get back in the car and drive away. Oh, but yeah, That wouldn't sure. make any sense. And, yeah. And, you know, if I'm driving down the road, I see a violation. Um, I have to call either the state police or a local agency to come in and take care of that. And if yep. they're busy, then, you know, i got to ride behind somebody <laughs> who's potentially impaired, and then they crash into somebody. I mean, that's that's a hard uh, hard thing to, well, to handle. So. And especially up in the northern sector, up there in Pittsburgh and Coburg, that area, there's not many police up there, so really, you guys are the only ones that can do law enforcement sometimes. In some cases, yeah. In some cases, are we have to extend beyond even, you know, into the criminal realm. Yeah. Um, even as I... I used to cover the Laconi area, had the southern end of Lake Winnipesaukee. It was my original patrol, and I was even helping Marine Patrol, you know, maybe be first on scene to like domestic violence issues that were going on in boats. And you know, you'd, you'd have to get them into shore and, and start figuring out what happened and things like that. So, yeah, it, uh, it we just everybody thinks we kind of do the hunting and fishing, and we don't have you know have a lot of other powers or that's kind of all we do it's our main it's our main function but there's a lot of other things that you know come into play and, and assistance to other agencies and things like that where are we standing with the the moose population i mean are they claim this year has been a good year for them to increase a little bit or that still the moose uh, issues it's kind of a hard one it's it we really we have an idea what's going on with the moose populations. I mean, we know they're declining, um, but the reasons why they're declining, um, 
you know, obviously there's the winter tick issue mm. is big, the brain worm issue. Um, but there are other states, and even in Canada, where they are flourishing. Yeah. But it seems like in New Hampshire we're having an issue getting them to come back. You know, so, and when you have areas of the state where there's, uh, you know, a hundred percent calf mortality, yeah. it's only going to take so long before <laughs> there are any more moose there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's that's really kind of the. We really don't have a handle, I don't think, on. How we kind of move beyond this, you know, we've reduced uh, hunting permits, uh, you know, drastically, um, and the unfortunate part of, of if you can't just put a moratorium on on anything like that because it's so difficult to get it back, you know, once once you know the populations start coming up. And so. they basically stand and look at you. They're like a cow. Oh, they, I mean, they don't move too fast. I mean, they just look at you like okay, but. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, I know, do both things. <laughs> and the deer, of course, the deer seems to be holding up, I guess. Deer populations are exponentially increased. Yeah. Like, like you said, I'm a New Hampshire boy. I grew up hunting here. I mean, I, I used to hunt in well, around Guilford. I used to hunt, you know, especially in the Lakes region. And then I would hunt up into Errol and around uh, Lake Umbagog as a kid. We have tons of deer now. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and more so when you get down to the southern part of the state. Oh, I know. Even in like the J2, which is that southern uh, Lake Winnipesaukee area, uh, Lakes region, there's there's a lot of deer around. Oh, we see them in Hume and Concord all the time. Oh yeah, uh, turkeys. They've been they've made a big comeback this year in Concord. Turkeys, are, the turkey populations have exploded. I mean, where where we've gone, you know, we've had to change some of our laws to to uh, you know make sure that we are taking in enough turkeys. You know, people have asked, why can't we have more tags for turkeys and things like that? We're not there yet, but, um, you know, certainly the population it continues to increase. Well, I mean, they worked so hard to bring them back. I mean, it was a Ted... Um, Walski. Walski. He, yep. he worked so hard to bring them back, and now they have flourished. But, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. You can overkill, too. But, and now there's, but the, there was a big cry this year about the bobcat, hunting bobcats, wasn't it? Uh, it was two years ago that two the bobcat, years ago? yeah, and that's interesting too because uh, turkeys are actually attributed to an increase in the bobcat population. I mean, that's that's been uh, one of the things they found is that since we increased one population of game bird, uh, of, yeah, game birds, they're now you know, increasing the fur bearing population. Mm. So, um, and then they attribute the turkey populations to. If we have a hard winter, bird feeders really have helped them out a lot. You know, we don't encourage feeding wildlife, but you know, it's one of those things where yeah. you know they yeah. they're in my backyard this month, but I don't have a bird feeder. Out there, yeah, so. well, you got something good out there, and if you have acre, I mean, this year's a banner. I think it's going to be a banner acorn year and a beech nut year. And if I, you got anything like that, you're going to have animals. Around. Now we heard last night at our Grange meeting that. It's been a record amount of acorns this year on the ground, mm -hmm. which means, according to the old farmer's almanac, I haven't read it yet, but that it's going to be a real bad winter. Mm -hmm. You heard that? I don't. I. I. I, I mean, every year, like, kind of here, yeah, you know, know it's going to be a. It's going to be this winter. It's going to be that winter. I think it's cyclical, and you know, sometimes well, we all of a sudden we you know we get big winters and. Well, we didn't have much snow last year. Ski, a lot of the ski areas got hit hard. Yeah. Those that don't have snow, snow making or whatever. But I just soon have a good winter. I don't want to. I'm tired of all the snow. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, as a kid, it was great, you know, if it no school maybe or whatever. But And then we were talking off camera about this uh, migrating of the wolf, red wolf or whatever coming in. And then there was a mountain lion been seen. Over in the western part of the state, and there was someone, another type of animal that was seen up north. And I thought, "Jeez, they're coming back, and here they are." But we, the coyotes. Um, I mean, but they've been here for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, and and what you're referring to is uh, the coyotes. When they, our, our eastern coyotes are pretty much the same as a western coyote, except the size. And the reason for that is that when they migrated from. The mm -hmm. West, mm -hmm. 
Um, they interbred with the red wolves, and that's why we have a bigger coyote in the east, because they have that gene that's in there. Now, as far as the mountain lions, we don't have a confirmed sighting oh, of okay. mountain lions in yeah. the state. Well, that's good. People, people seem, oh, some people think yeah. that we have a big conspiracy to hide mountain lions. I mean, if we had mountain lions are here, I mean, you know, I don't think it's going to be, you know, doom and gloom or public's going to be in danger in any way because it's a mountain lion. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I, what I found is that, you know, people will say, oh, I have a mount, I saw a mountain lion in my backyard. So you go there and there's like maybe a four or five day degraded, uh, coyote track or there's never a, a confirm, you know, you never go and look at a, a footprint in the, in the sand or, or in the snow and it's looks anything like a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a mountain lion track. Yeah. So yeah. if one showed up here tomorrow, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, nine times out of ten, it was probably something that somebody brought from a state that had didn't have uh, proper regulations for wild animals. That's happened over the years where mm. I know there was one case in Guilford years and years ago where some guys went into a barn to do some work and uh, they went to open up one of the stalls, and there was a mountain lion in there. Mm. And so they called Fish and Game, and, and uh, we had to go over and, and uh, take the animal. But that was a, a mountain lion that had come from out west someplace, and somebody had moved out here, and, and then, you know, it's kind of left it. Because this is the, the problem is, is that they're really cute when they're young, but when they get older, they're a handful. <laughs> and any wild animals like that. Not to mention they carry diseases and things of that nature. Well, is it the black bear that's back in the state or brown bear? There was something about a bear that was back in the state again. The black bear? Uh, there's been, I mean, we've always had black bears. As I thought. So yeah. Maybe it's a brown bear? I don't know. There was no, I didn't know that... of any brown bears. We've had some problem bears that we've, you know, oh, taken I know. to other places. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, because normally we try to, if they're are being an issue, we remove them. Um, and then, you know, take them up north and hopefully they you know, <laughs> learn not to come back. But it's not uncommon for a bear to, you know, to come back to where it came from. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah, they, can, they have quite a range. They had a collar on one and he, he was up, I think around Success Pond, someplace like that. And he would travel, he'd travel miles and miles. Like all, he would go over into, uh, into Maine, he'd come back into New Hampshire. Um, but he went from like Berlin down into I don't know, like Ossipi someplace, and when coming right back, he was really moving mm. around. But um, yeah, I mean they're known to, to do that. Wow. Huh. Now out of curiosity, the fishing game. Do they still have their TV show going on? Or? Yeah, we're still. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure which season we are because it's broken up. Yeah. What they call a season and what we kind of perceive as a season is a little bit different. But Northwoods Law, it's on Animal Planet, still going on. Um, people really love it. They, uh, you know, tune into it and look forward to it. We've had some events where we've had officers there, you know, for uh, premieres, and uh, you know, that's the people are just busting out the doors. And you know, where do you tape your shows? We tape our shows all over the state. Oh, okay. Um, so Angle Entertainment uh, is the they really are the ones that are creating the show. Um, they have cameramen and, and um, you know producers that come out and mm. uh, you know cameras all over the cruiser and things like that and and uh, with handheld cameras and they'll follow you around and and um, we've had you know, like I said people love it um, we their the Facebook page has just you know they've continued to increase with by millions of That's viewers Northwoods Law Northwoods Law yep a law law okay. Yep. Well, started out in Maine. Um, they got done in Maine. I think they had four or five seasons in Maine. And now, I believe we're up to like uh, season seven, somewhere in there. So, so they're going to stay a while. Yeah, yeah well, you know, we're, we're looking at it and seeing how viable it is. But, you know, as far as uh, as far as far people enjoying the show, I mean, I, I've gone all over the country. And, mm. you know, when people uh, know, you know, where you work and what you do, they say, oh, I love that show. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. That's good. And the best thing about the show has been that it really, uh, it really shows people what we do. Oh yeah. Um, you know, 
people yeah. really didn't have an idea what we did. Um, and you know, to be able to see the wildlife calls and the enforcement, whether it's on snow machine or four wheeler, or you know, it's a deer case, turkey right. case, whatever the case might be, and the search and rescues, you name it. I mean, people say, "Well, I didn't know you did that. I don't know you did that." No, of course not. So yeah, it's been it's been good for us. Yeah, that's good. Well, I know I talk to the colonel off and on because he is a North Country boy. Yep. And he knew my w wife's uh, family up in Groveton, mm -hmm. the whole group of them. And then, of course, now he's moved down here. But he was saying that you guys are understaffed, though. We have a lot of openings, yeah. um, and uh, which we're trying to fill. Uh, you know, obviously, budgetarily, things, <laughs> things pick up and slow down and, and you want to fill things and things look good and then something changes and you have to go in a different mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really, uh, you know, we're doing it, we have less officers now than we did in the 1960s and we have more of a workload. Yeah. So, okay. um, and, you know, with the increased OHRB um, that we have, especially in the North Country and, and really across the state, things are starting to increase as far as Towns wanting to open up roads, you know, more trail systems, things like that. We've actually uh, had to put on specific OHRV officers to, uh -huh. to you know, fund it through the OHRV program. Um, and so, you know, currently we have two of them in the trainee pipeline, and then we have two officers. But you know, certainly we have more openings. Um, actually, today is the final day of the uh, oral boards for trainees. Um, so. Um, a pool of our sergeants and some officers will take the candidates we've had through the written test and the physical agility and now um, creating a list that will come up to the command staff and then continue the process from there. I think he told me he had like 20 openings or something. Whoa, that's a lot. We were looking, uh, you know, and through attrition, you, you, people retire, people move up. Oh, yeah. You know, it's so it it's always seems to be a constant flux of... Hmm. It takes a full year to get a trainee to where oh, you sure. need to be because you know the great thing about this job is that it changes every you know, three months. Yeah. Um, but it's also a bad part of getting trainees in the pipeline and, and out you know in the in the workforce so that you know you get you can cover areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now we currently have thirty seven officers and and, uh, and that includes the command staff. Wow. So and you think then that's. Massachusetts to Canada and everywhere in between. Sure. Yeah. Especially when you, when you know, communities open up roads or open up new trails, and, and then they make comments like, "Well, we never see fish and game." The hard part of that is, I, I mean, I'd love to put a hundred guys out there, but you know, um, that I think has to be part <coughs> of the contingency plan for some when some of these things happen. Is that you know we need to uh, plan. You know for more officers, whether it be you know, the local officers, are gonna, uh, local municipal officers are going to have to take part of that burden, um, you know, with the fish and game as well. And, and sometimes up north, you know, it's even state police because you know, so many roads are open. And, uh, you know, when a OHRV crashes on the road, it's technically a motor vehicle accident. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's a lot of things to be weighed and a lot of things uh, that go into it. But Were you ever assigned up to Troop A? Not Troop A. Troop F up there? Um, I've wor I've not permanently, yeah. but I worked up there a lot as a trainee. I've always <laughs> gone up there and worked snow machine. Um, we do uh, we work with uh, Border Patrol, what's called the Stone Garden Grants, mm -hmm. and uh, we go up and work those. So I've worked up there over the years. Yeah. Um, you know, it's nice, and that's the other great thing is that you know. So I started out in the Lakes region. Um, I got promoted lieutenant, and then went down to the seacoast, and and when you get a chance to you know go back to you know go and, and work up north, it's it's kind of nice to have those opportunities. So outside of that, no. there's not much up there. <laughs> when we've gone on, I've gone up there for Grange meetings. It's been when you get past Lancaster, there's nothing. Uh, no McDonald's up there. No nothing much of it. That's yeah, you got to plan ahead. <laughs> Look for the trains, but that's about it. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. So, But no, and of course, this, this next month, the state range in uh, not September, but October will be honoring 
uh, an officer from the fishing game again, yeah. and I sent a letter to the colonel reminding him that I need a name, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get to him. I mentioned in Lytton in October. I'm pretty sure that he has a name and, and yeah. should be getting it shortly. So yeah, we had to move the convention to West Lebanon about <laughs> this Concord something mixed up down here. But next year will be back in Concord. But nice. Yeah, it will be. It's nice to come back here. But yeah. They try to go around to different parts of the state for sure. But we know the the Grange has always been involved with fishing game and the state police, of course, reformed the right. legislation. And uh, it's still an agricultural organization here. Right. And the farmers were the ones that really needed the protection up north back years ago. Right. And not the police up there. But, uh, well, I can tell you that your spring day you have over at Hazen Drive is a big success. Boy, they have a lot of people to turn out for that. Discover Wild New Hampshire Day. Yes. Yeah, it's quite popular. Yeah. Yeah. And this year was a little different, got a little bit of rain. And uh, oh, in the and kind of the early afternoon, which kind of scared some people away, but yep. still, you know, even with the rain, it's you know close to you know, eighty five hundred, ten thousand people. It's, oh yeah. It's pretty interesting. Oh yes. So, yeah. Well, it's free number one. That's good for families. Yep. And, uh, so it was, I, I remember seeing the traffic over there. It's like, boy, I guess I can have a big crowd coming <laughs> in. So. Yep. With the show and with the day like that, it's always going to be. Now, do you remember where the old fishing game office was? Yeah, it was the off ramp to 93 yeah. up here. Yeah, uh, exit 14. Yeah. I'll never forget that fire that day. Oh, my God. And we had it was a brick building, and the whole place was engulfed in flames. And oh, nobody yeah. knew what it was. No, I don't even know if they knew what started it. I've never heard. I mean, obviously, I've seen the pictures of it. Cause yeah. There's been a lot of pictures of that fishing. Yeah, game on the off time. ramp of 93 at 14. It was yep. right there. And brother, it was quite. Well, it, well, 14 used to go more straight or down. And then they, when fishing game burned, they moved it over to, uh, to come across from Fort Eddy Road. But yep. yeah, that it was a Saturday morning when it happened. And brother, yep. flames. It wasn't the New Hampshire Hotel on the other side yes, of the road. Yes, the Highway yep. Hotel. Yeah. Yeah. We had many conventions there. Yes, that's before the days of Hannaford and Shaw's and all that yep. mess over I there. I remember that as a kid. Yes, the so, Highway, New Hampshire Highway Hotel. Yeah. And behind it was the Hampshire Steakhouse at the Hotel Ram. Mm. It was like a cafeteria type, um, buffet type line there, but they did a good business. But, yeah. But yeah, those are the gone days now. I know. And, uh, I don't know, but uh, no, we had many conventions at the Harry Hotel. But no, fishing game has always been very. I, I mean, we don't see a lot of them in Concord. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we go over to Turtle Town Pond. That's where we used to fish uh, when I was a kid. My father we used to dock a row. Used to be a lot of rowboats docked over yep. there, and then somebody would let them go. But then now, <laughs> and then one year they had to drain that pond. Mm -hmm. And then fill it back up again. You know, something. It was something. Yeah, mercury or something. Yeah, they used to reclaim. I'm assuming. And I can't tell you this off the top of my head. It's a trout pond. Mm. Um, I know back in the day, that's how they used to clean out trout ponds. They they call it reclaiming, mm. and they would, uh, yeah, they would just drain them down, kind of shock them. And I'm not 100 percent sure what they shocked them with, but then mm. they would, you know, because there's the rules for uh, trout ponds. You can't have shiners. You can't have live bait things like that, and uh, even now, when you go to some trout ponds, you can see that somebody must have wow. dumped some in there. We used to go there for horn pout. That's what we went for. Yep. Horn pout and um, good-sized perch. Yep. And there were, used to be some uh, uh, pickerel. Yeah, pickerel in warm there. water pond. Yeah. yeah, so that was good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then down East West Sugar Ball, that used to be a private area down there. You could go fishing down there, and somebody walked it off. I don't know why, but now it got blocked. But well, we are coming to a close, and we wish you well out there and safe. Thank you. You know, and it's so good having you on here. And uh, does your you have a family? Do you? Uh, of course, yeah. Yeah, they worry about yeah. you out there. Do you think? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, well, you, you know, be safe. You never know what's going to happen. Day I know. Be darn safe out there. It's many nuts. But anyhow, so we've been visiting with Lieutenant. 
Mike Eastman from the Hampshire Fish and Game Conservation Officer and I can't hear you. Captain, I'm yeah. sorry, Captain. That's goodness, right. that's, that's what right. it was. He said Lieutenant once and I got mixed up. That's me, old as Alzheimer's. But anyway, Captain Michael Eastman and uh, Conservation Officer for the state of New Hampshire. So if you see him, say hello and uh, there you go. And uh, thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm your host, Dick Patton. Have a great day, and we'll see you after we get back from Ann Arbor. <laughs>